Right, so here we are. We've been here before, uh, one time with the Igo. It's actually a really nice place. It's like open field to wherever, you know, a farm and, and whatnot. But usually not many cars uh, come up and down this road. I'm hoping not many cars come up and down this road because today we are going to be pointing out every single mod that I've done to the Focus. And just a little disclaimer, we have done so many more in like the past few months than I have in the past year. And that's just because we haven't got the bike anymore. probably best if we start at the front right yeah it is so here we are this is for those of you that don't know my 2013 i know it doesn't look like it but it's a 2013 ford focus ztec s 1.6 diesel so everyone's like oh my god why did you get a sport and then a diesel well it's incredible on fuel and you can't deny that so anyway you can see it's looking different it's um it's not standard which is great. Um, so what we're going to do, we're going to do the exterior. We're going to go into the engine bay and then we're going to go into the interior. So that's like the sort of, you know, the most is done on the outside, then a bit on the engine and then a bit on the interior. So let's start right at the front with that pinstriping right at the bottom. It's a bit chipped at the moment. It needs redoing, but pinstriping is all around the car. The only thing it's not on at the moment is the rear spoiler cap, which I need to do as I've literally just put it on as that actual diffuser. That is all standard anyway. And the next bit that's been wrapped is these bits here. So obviously to make like the wide mouth look, looks extra, extra mean. Love, love, love that. And alongside getting those bits wrapped, I actually got the whole car de -chrome. So that's why you can see these bits and all the bits on the side. So all the chrome on the side, all the way up and any other chrome that was on the car got de -chromed, which is fantastic. Um, I also had the sun strip fitted and the pinstripe done on that. I'm 50-50 at the moment whether I want to keep it gloss black or matte black. And obviously I want the mirrors and roof to go with it, but I don't know, do I go matte or do I go gloss? I'm not too sure. Keep it to the front. We got these gloss black fog lamp covers. I actually forget about these so often because it was such a quick mod to do. I bought it, it was like 10 pounds off eBay and they just slotted out and slotted in. I just keep forgetting about it. So yeah, I have actually done those. The badge is obviously the next thing that needs to be changed on the front. So letting the old, the old club down here. I did actually have a set of aftermarket lights I just did not like them. I didn't get on with them. And um, yeah, so I just ended up with a standard. And anyway, when you're looking from the front like this end, the car looks so mean with the standard lights. Obviously, we can upgrade the bulbs and whatnot, but I think that's pretty much the front end. If we move on to the side, and we've got a bit more. So obviously, all the de-chroming, got the Team Hiko wind deflectors on the sides and the back. They're pinstriped as well. I got that done when I got all the other wrapping bits done. I also added these which are auto beam led lights so if i unlock them they actually swoop they have got an option to go static as well so that's great um i did have a cheap uh, amazon set on there and they're awful so if you're ever thinking should i waste no i say should i waste should i uh, put 60 quid worth of indicator on yes 100 percent every single time they're amazing the quality is way better everyone asks me about these badges now i have actually changed these badges to the gel insert but when i first bought this car obviously i bought it second hand the previous owner had the badges on and i feel like it's just like a, a keeping its roots you know by by keeping that badge so i did they were horrible chrome ones so i ended up getting these um of dmp graphics great um quality and fantastic obviously they look way better than the previous ones which were all corroded away way better um nothing else really on the side obviously you saw me install these these are like the rear window louvers absolutely awesome cheapest chips i think they look quite cheerful each to their own some people like it some people don't like it i like it ah, i can't really you know can't really fault it but a few quid makes the rear end look a bit nicer why not besides that obviously looking from like this standpoint if i just walk a bit further down we are obviously lowered on coilovers not stupidly low I, I did have the rear really, really low, but in the end, I just lifted it up. I am going to put spaces on um, just to push the wheels out a bit more. And I really don't want any sort of rubbing. And I feel like this is like a really good compromise of low, but still being able to really thrash it in the twisty. So I really, really like the way it's sitting at the moment. So I'm very happy with that. Moving on to the rear, which always seems like such a big part of the car. Like, I don't know why, but it looks so massive compared to the front. 
Um, obviously, you can see how far the wheels are tucked in, so we definitely need spacers. Off the subject here, we've just put on the Maxton uh, spoiler cap, which is fantastic, great quality. Um, I, I have nothing better to say. Um, they're just great. Just put on the rear wiper delete, as you would have seen. Um, the sticker I've literally put on just before this video try and spice it up keep it all branded and whatnot not much has changed on the rear end uh, a lot of people think that the diffuser is aftermarket the only thing after like changed about the diffuser is it's pinstriped so i did this myself um i just bought some pinstripe went up and down and around inspired by someone off instagram i thought it was such a fantastic idea so i robbed it besides that front and rear we've got 4d plates which is they look great and um, they're all legal as well which is always a positive but i think that's pretty much about it when it comes to the outside oh how can i forget black wheel bolts and black center caps on the standard wheels and then we swapped the standard rubber to toyo proxy sport which i have a whole nother video about if you guys want to go check that out amazing amazing tires really really getting on with them so happy days so i think the next bit is inside the bonnet I'm telling it i am really really hoping someone doesn't come down here excuse the little dribble of uh <laughs> windscreen washer fluid but here we are. So this, like I said, is a uh, 1.6 litre turbo diesel. No, it's not the torquiest, but it is absolutely mega. Inside the engine bay, de-resonated turbo pipe under here and also a blue charge pipe. All the vacuum lines were done in blue. Um, that's just because I found some of them are cracking. So I didn't really like that. The Focus RS airbox lid. I don't really like the fact it says RS. I probably will blank it and maybe even cut it out don't really like it because it's not an rs um, and then just underneath that you can see there's a pipe across air filter fantastic nothing else has really changed you can see the sub wire there but this is currently running about 140 something horsepower let me get the sheet so here's my sheet from performance remaps great guy over there we're running about 145.5 horsepower with 350 newton meters of torque that's great for a little 1.6 diesel that returns 60 to 70 miles per gallon on the motorway you're literally laughing so i think that's pretty much it when it comes to the engine i gave it a good detail just before but it looks like it's getting a bit dirty yeah i'll try and keep on top of it regular maintenance all the jazz like that uh instead of waiting 10,000 miles to do an oil change. I do it every 6,000, um, whether that's two or three times a year. I don't really care as long as the car's very well looked after. Um, I've got trust in the car and I hope that the car has trust in me. <laughs> that's the way I feel. Um, no, I, I, I just like making sure everything is okay. So the last bit which I'd like to go through is the interior. So not much has changed in the interior. Um, I'm yet to do a lot of stuff, um, but just from what I can see, obviously we've got some cheap mats. Um, I've had the steering wheel wrapped in vinyl. I've also had the center console done in black. I, but I did those both myself, so they're not great. Um, but I'm planning, I think, on getting them all uh, spray painted gloss black just because it's, it's like just a much better finish. So I think that's definitely on the list uh, of things to do. Going towards the back, um, we've just got the camera case there and a laptop because we do a lot of coding. Speaking of which, we have installed cruise control, which not many ZTEC S's have, if any, standard. So that's great. Uh, more blue mats in the back, uh, just your standard ZTEC S seats. And then just looking in the boot, we have my toolbox, which has some true tension stuff and UK biker stuff. And then obviously the 1000 watt fly sub, which is a fantastic sub, by the way, when you couple it up with the lovely speakers that come with all the focuses. I think there's only one more thing that I haven't really shown you. Um, when we get everything booted all up, started up, um, the last thing which I've changed in here is, da, 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 put it in reverse, and we've got a lovely little camera. Cheap little Amazon thing, you can't really go wrong. Um, I have got plans to obviously upgrade the stereo because at the moment, we're just the standard Sync 1 stereo. Um, I have once again bought another stereo. I plugged it all in. I just really didn't like it. Um, the quality of this of the stuff that I put in this car, I want to be really top notch. And if I find that, you know, I'm putting everything together and I'm just not liking the quality or not liking how it feels, then I'd rather just send it back and get a refund, honestly. Um, obviously with the iGo, it's cheap and cheerful. Anything you can plug into it, it's an upgrade. Um, but with this, there's a lot of features in here, such as like auto park, which is fantastic if you're, um, if you're wanting to parallel park. Um, you know, you've got the parking sensors. You've got a, you've got so many systems linked up to the Focus that if you end up changing the, like the center console, you lose a lot of the features that go along with it, 
which is kind of upsetting because there is a lot of good alternatives out there but they're just not able to harness the coding or whatever goes on behind the scenes with ford it's a bit upsetting um but it's not a bad stereo like anyone who's been in in my car or anyone that's been in any focus knows it's good like if you couple it up with a sub it's even better like it's a great stereo there's definitely no limitations regarding audio quality um obviously the software is a bit clunky we're talking 2013 here so it's coming up to you know eight nine years old this car which is it's, it's incredible you sort of i can't believe it the thing feels brand new i mean obviously this car is actually one of the higher spec zetec s's so you've got the bigger screen here you've got the full color uh, five inch display there with maps and nav obviously you've got auto park these are features that not every single zetec s has so the fact that this has it is a great starting platform but like i said it becomes an issue further on down the line if you want to keep all those things and start changing out a load of stuff so that's all the mods inside out in, and engine bay um i'd say the best mod that i've done would be tied between two things one would be lowering it so suspension and all the work that goes along with that or the second one was the remap now anyone that's driven a 1.6 diesel even the performance model which is like 115 horsepower you think great it's going to be really torque it's not it really isn't and the car is quite disappointing like when i first picked it up i was quite let down is that the right word just just disappointed i i at that point i just wish i had a two liter um but now after after i took it to the guys at performance remap they did such a great job i mean you can see the power all the way through the torque range but what it doesn't show is in first gear there's actually a boost limiter and i know a lot of people are going to slate all you know people that remove boost limiters on diesels because of the gearbox this that and the other i understand that driving this and it gets to the point where you're literally struggling or you're scared that you're gonna you can't pull out fast enough that's quite scary like it was literally about a quarter throttle when you're full throttle in first gear and i didn't really like that so um, he managed to get rid of all that the car felt so much more responsive um obviously with the air filter and the deresonated turbo pipe everything everything like that it it, it all came together and when the remap happened it really did change the car and it really sparked something inside me that really just made me enjoy it you know um and then obviously suspension and and, and stuff like that is is phenomenal it's always great when you start tuning suspension and changing the tires and stuff because you it's like you unlock a different experience and i feel like there's only two things really that have that have done that for me and that's lowering it and that's the remap but yeah no that i'm really really enjoying the focus and i hope you guys are as well other than that i think it is time to head home i hope you guys all enjoyed the video um, and obviously share out the video with your friends if you haven't already make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications to never miss a future upload uh, and then there's all the social media links below with my website um feel free to check them out other than that guys thank you all for watching and i'll see you all in the next one